Okay, so there you go. Okay, explain how you can get water to boil at room temperature. All right. Um, this is where we're looking at what is the boiling point, how is it defined, and that is defined by the vapor pressure. All right. When the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, it'll boil. All right. So uh, you can either increase the temperature until the vapor pressure increases enough until it gets to atmospheric pressure. That's what we normally do. But you can also reduce the pressure around the water um, until the pressure is at or below the vapor pressure of the water, right? And uh, once the vapor pressure, or rather once the uh, pressure around the water, that is the atmospheric pressure, gets below um, the vapor pressure, then it will boil, even though it's at room temperature. All right, question 22. How would you expect capillary action to be affected by the following? That is, will it be greater or less after the change, all else being constant? All right, so if we increase the temperature, what would we expect to happen with capillary action? All right, so Remember, increasing the temperature, the molecules are uh, vibrating faster and faster, and that disrupts the attractive forces between them, which is going to reduce that uh, surface tension, which is in turn going to reduce the um, um, capillary action. So I'll say it is less. Okay, and if we're increasing the pressure, all right, we're increasing the number of molecules um, pressing down on the, the surface, and um, that has the effect of um, reducing that surface tension as well, because there's... Um, less of a, of, a, of a difference. Now, there's more molecules on the, on the surface, okay? So we can draw it like this. Here's our um, meniscus. There's more molecules up here, all right? And that means there is uh, um, more interaction between the surface molecules and the vapor molecules, okay? More interaction there means there's less of a difference between there and there, the interaction down with the liquid, all right? So less interaction, that means it's gonna have less uh, pull uh, through capillary action. So both of these actually will be less, all right? And finally, um, the last question, soap molecules have a long nonpolar chain attached to a polar head, all right? Using intermolecular forces, explain why it forms tiny balls called micelles that trap oil and grease inside um, and allow you to wash it away, all right? So that's the process. Um, that happens when we wash our hands, all right? The oil and grease on our hands, it gets trapped inside these uh, micelles with the soap, and they have that polar head and the nonpolar chain, okay? So what happens is they, uh, they form micelles because that, those nonpolar chains, they, they're attracted to each other more than they're attracted to the water, okay? They're not attracted to the water, and so um, so they group together um, rather than being uh, mixed with the water, just like oil and water, all right? Um, but since they're attached to that polar head, the polar heads are attracted to the water, all right? So, um, so you have this part, there's that attraction, and then 
the chains they all kind of uh, pull together and that kind of pulls them closed um, in a ball all right um, and uh, so it, it basically um, with those polar heads that's the only thing that the water sees and it's like one giant ball um, that is uh, it's like a, a polar particle okay one big polar particle and when that comes in contact with some non-polar oil or grease on your hands or wherever um, the non-polar oil and grease uh, moves to the inside because it doesn't have much attraction at all to the polar parts it has attraction to the non-polar part all right um, and so it gets sucked up into the inside and um, yeah it's drawn into the middle and then it's surrounded again by water and then you wash it away <laughs>